Today's lesson is called a peek into Bhutan. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and my name is Roger. And today we're going to be doing some traveling. And you know, of course,、uh, lots of people would like to travel to places that are far away in the world, like Europe or Africa or South America. But there are lots of wonderful places right here in our backyard in Asia. Maybe you've been to India, maybe you've been to Nepal, but maybe you haven't been to Bhutan, and that's where we're going today. We're going to Bhutan, which apparently is one of the happiest places on planet. Earth. I'm not kidding around. Apparently, there in Bhutan, people measure the welfare of their citizens using a, a happiness index. Yeah, how well are people doing? Well, let's take a measurement and figure out just how happy they are. I'm not joking. They actually do that. And yes, this country apparently is known for having a very happy population. They're happy people there. In Bhutan, now the people are happy; they do quite well for themselves, apparently. But Bhutan is also a very beautiful place. Yes, tourists are flocking to Bhutan these days because it's just an extremely gorgeous place with majestic hills and mountains and valleys. I think you guys are getting a picture of what we're going to be doing today. Yes, we are going to be exploring the beautiful, majestic country of Bhutan both today. And tomorrow. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. A peek into Bhutan, stretching from the foothills to the peaks of the eastern Himalayas, Bhutan is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. The country was previously veiled in mystery, having been closed to tourism until the mid 1970s. Today, more and more travelers are discovering Bhutan, a country famous for its happy population. 大家好，标题中我们看到名词 peek， 指一瞥、看一眼，像是 Marty hopes to get a peek at the Queen when he goes to Buckingham Palace next week. Marty 下周要去白金汉宫，他希望能亲眼见到女王一面。另外，这个字也可以当动词，指窥视。偷看，例如 ，The child peeked into the room to see if his mother was sleeping. 小孩往房间里偷看，想知道他的妈妈睡着了没。再补充一个名词片语 ，sneak peek, S N E A K, sneak peek 表示抢先看、预告。举例来说 ，The studio offered reporters a sneak peek at its latest film. 电影公司提供记者抢先观看最新的电影，或是。The director screened a sneak peek of his latest film. 那位导演放映了他最新电影的一段预告片。再来，我们看到单字 foothill 这个字是名词，指山路。像是 We witnessed marvelous scenery in the foothills of Mount Fuji. 我们在富士山的山路下亲眼见到壮阔的风景。Okay, so we just listened to the first part of our lesson, but、uh, let's take a look at the title first. We've got the vocabulary term "peak." Peak here is being used as a noun. It's just a small look at something, usually for a short period of time. So here we're just giving you a brief introduction to Bhutan. We're taking a peek into Bhutan. Peak can also be used as a verb to peek at something. For example, I think when I went to a friend's birthday party when I was in first grade, I got caught peeking. I was peeking. I was looking out from the blindfold. When we were playing the game, pin the tail on the donkey. There you go. I also played that game when I was growing up. I also peeked. Okay, you've got to peek. Otherwise, the game is almost impossible. But but still, it's fun. Okay, let's go ahead and start reading. Stretching from the foothills to the peaks of the eastern Himalayas, Bhutan is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Okay, there I said it. Okay, during the introduction, I alluded to some of the beautiful things that you can see there in Bhutan. But I didn't go so far as to say that Bhutan is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Well. It is. The people there are happy, and the place is beautiful as well. But 
Where is it exactly? Well, apparently it's situated at the foothills to the peaks of the eastern Himalayas. So it's next to the Himalayas. It's situated there in the foothills there next to the Himalayas. So usually you have mountains, not just a single mountain. Yeah, very often mountains occur in ranges. There are many of them in one place. Now, next to these mountains, you might have some small hills, okay? And these small hills next to these mountains, okay, are called foothills. Right, like Denver, Colorado is in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Denver itself is not in the mountains, but it's kind of getting into the mountains there on these small hills before the mountain range begins. Now, the country was previously veiled in mystery, having been closed to tourism until the mid-1970s. So here we've got the word veil, which can be both a verb and a noun. Uh, the bride will wear a veil at her wedding, for example, to cover her face. But uh, to cover something is to veil something as a verb. So yes, it was veiled in mystery. It was covered in mystery. Nobody knew too much about this place. Yeah, what's going on there in Bhutan? We don't know. The place has been closed to tourism. No one can visit, so we have no idea of what is going on there in Bhutan. How mysterious! But then later on, here it says the government did open up the country to tourism, and now people are discovering this place. It's a wonderful place. It's beautiful, and the people there are super happy. Yes, today more and more travelers are discovering Bhutan, a country famous for its happy population. So, I'm not joking around here. Bhutan might just be the most beautiful place on earth. And the happiest place on earth as well. All right, with that, folks, it is time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Bhutan's best-known attraction is the Tiger's Nest Monastery, located outside the city of Paro. This magnificent temple complex is built on the edge of a cliff, approximately 900 meters above the valley's floor. Getting there involves a horseback ride or a hike. If you're lucky, you might even catch sight of a golden langur on your way there. Each March or April, Paro holds a huge five-day Buddhist festival featuring dancers in gorgeous costumes. Attending this festival is an excellent way to experience traditional Bhutanese religious culture. The second part, we see a verb, approximately, meaning close to. It takes approximately three hours to drive to Chicago, depending on the traffic. 开车到芝加哥大约要三个小时，是交通情况而定。另外，这个字去掉字尾 ly， 就成了形容词。Approximate， 指接近的，大约的。我们可以说 ，I believe that the approximate time of the opening ceremony will be ten o'clock. 我认为开幕式大约会在十点左右开始。再来，我们看到单字 horseback。这个字是形容词，指骑马的，在马背上的。举例来说 ，As a horseback rider, I know how to care for and control horses. 身为一名骑马者，我知道如何照料和控制马匹。另外，这个字也可以是名词，指马背。像是 Diana was afraid the first time she rode on horseback. Diana 第一次骑马时很害怕。接着，我们看到一个片语 ，catch sight of 加名词，表示看到点点点。条件点点点，例如 ，paparazzi caught sight of the famous couple leaving a restaurant in downtown Los Angeles. 狗仔队看到这对名夫妻从洛杉矶市区的一间餐厅离开。或是 ，Earl caught sight of his math teacher in the crowd. Earl 在人群中瞥见了他的数学老师。最后，我们看到一个单字 ，costume。这个字是名词，指某活动或历史时期的服装、戏服。举例来说。Everyone at the party dressed in 19th-century costumes. 参加派对的人都穿着十九世纪时期的服装，或是 students acting in the play wore animal costumes that made them look quite funny. 在话剧中演出的学生穿着动物服装，让他们看起来很滑稽。All right. Now, of course, if you're traveling to a certain place, you want to know 
what you should go see, what you should experience when you travel there, and that's what the second part of our lesson today talks about: the sights and attractions of Bhutan. So, Bhutan's best-known attraction is the Tiger's Nest Monastery, located outside the city of Paro. Okay, so in Bhutan there is a city called Paro, and I guess this is a pretty attractive place. It's a big attraction. It attracts a lot of people. A lot of people want to go check it out. It's called the Tiger's Nest Monastery. You've probably seen pictures of it. It's like that、uh, monastery, that Buddhist temple, sitting up on top of a mountain here. So of course that's an attraction, something people go check out when they travel. Like here in Taiwan, of course, a popular attraction is Taroko Gorge. Or the Palace Museum; those are popular attractions in Taiwan. Yeah, sometimes in physics you can talk about attraction. Sometimes magnets attract pieces of metal and stuff like that. You would call that magnetic attraction. That's not the case here. We're not being a literal or scientific in that way, but the idea remains the same. An attraction is a place that brings people in. Tourists want to go to Bhutan because of the attractions there. They want to visit and see these things. And yes, the best-known attraction apparently in Bhutan there is Tiger's Nest Monastery. How cool! Now more on Tiger's Nest Monastery. This magnificent temple complex is built on the edge of a cliff. Approximately 900 meters above the valley's floor. How about that? By the way, this is not just a monastery. Okay, apparently this is a temple complex, and this gives me the idea that there are many buildings there. That's why we're using the word. Complex in this situation. Yeah, like down in Gaoshung, there's Fu Guangshan Monastery. That is a complex there. It's got、uh, many buildings and a big Buddha statue and stuff like that. So again, this is a temple complex, and of course, it's built on the edge of a cliff. That's like a big pile of rocks or something that goes up really high, really fast. Of course, there are high cliffs on the east coast of Taiwan, especially between Suao. And Hualien. Anyways, yes, don't fall off the cliff when you go to Tiger's Nest Monastery because it's about 900 meters above the valley's floor. So yes, if you were to fall off, wow, you'd have a long fall. You wouldn't be surviving that fall because yes, this is very high up there. It says it's approximately 900 meters above the valley's floor. Here, approximately means about. Okay, is it exactly 900 meters above the valley's floor? No, but it's close. Right, so of course it's kind of high. You're going to expect some difficulty getting there. So getting there involves a horseback ride or a hike. So those are two ways to get there. That is what is involved in getting yourself to that place. So you can you know, check it out and take pictures and maybe talk to some of the monks or something like that. So horseback means you're riding on a horse, a horseback ride. Now, if you're lucky, you might even catch sight of a golden. Langor. Okay, that's a special kind of a monkey in the Himalayas. There, we like monkeys, of course. Here in Taiwan, we've got the、uh, Formosan macaque that everybody knows and loves. That's like a monkey. So here, you might just happen to see this. You know, you won't always see it. You know, you might catch a glimpse of it, or you might get a peek at this monkey. Not everybody gets to see it, but you might catch sight of it. That's what this phrase here, "catch sight of," means. You see something that people normally don't see. There you go, and we've already used the word peak and the word glimpse, and yes, you could also say that you can catch sight of something. Okay, so maybe you don't walk up and shake this monkey's hand. Okay, but you might just see it long enough that you know what it is. Do you get a detailed view of it? Do you get to shake its hand and feed it? No, but you might see it for a second or so and say, "Hey, yes, that is a golden." Langor. I just saw a golden langor. My trip to Bataan is now complete. I've seen everything. I was waiting to see one of these monkeys. Now I have. Now I can go home a happy person. Anyways, we're trying to get to Tiger's Nest Monastery. On the way there, it's beautiful, and there's also some great wildlife. Now there's more here. Okay, each March or April, Paro holds a five-day, a huge five-day Buddhist festival. Featuring dancers in gorgeous costumes. 
So there you go. Like I said, there's more. Not only is there beautiful, beautiful things to see, not only is there wonderful wildlife there, but there's also parties. Yeah, here we've got a huge five-day Buddhist festival. Amazing. How cool. How great. Now, it says here that this festival features dancers in gorgeous costumes. Here, the word gorgeous is an adjective that describes something that is extremely beautiful, okay? If you're gorgeous, you're not just pretty. You're not just cute. You're not just beautiful. You are at the next level there. You're super amazing when it comes to looks. You're gorgeous. Yep, the bride looked gorgeous at her wedding. So, of course, here these uh, dancers will be in gorgeous costumes, which would mean traditional clothing that they wear costumes. I don't think they're dressing up for Halloween here. We do wear costumes to Halloween parties. You might dress up as a World War I flying ace or something like that. But in this particular case, these are traditional outfits worn by Buddhists there. And attending this festival is an excellent way to experience traditional Bhutanese religious culture. After all, it is a Buddhist country. So there you go. If you happen to be there in March or April, you'll have this experience to check out this five-day Buddhist festival. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's move on now to the third part. The next stop is Bhutan's capital, Timpu. It's the only capital city on earth that has no traffic lights. At Timpu, visit the Folk Heritage Museum, where displays of household objects reveal the richness of the Bhutanese way of life. Then head to the Moti Tahang Takin Preserve to look at Bhutan's national animal, the Takin. Resembling a cross between a goat and a cow, the Takin is central to Bhutanese religious history. All right, folks, let's move on. Let's go ahead and head to the capital of Bhutan. Yes, the next stop, the next stop on our trip is Bhutan's capital, Timpu. Yeah, that's the capital city there in Bhutan. Now, fun fact, this city, there are no traffic lights in this city. I'm not joking around. It's the only capital city on earth that has no traffic lights. That's right. I think they trust each other. They're not in a big hurry, so they don't need those traffic lights. And at Timpu, visit the Folk Heritage Museum, where displays of household objects reveal the richness of the Bhutanese way of life. So that's an attraction that you can check out in Timpu, the Folk Heritage Museum. Folk means having to do with people and their customs and traditions. They're all on display at this museum. They'll have household objects the things people use in their daily lives, and by going there you can kind of understand how the Bhutanese people live, what's their way of life like. Then head to the Motitan Takin Preserve. Preserve here just means it's probably a natural area, kind of like a state forest or a national forest that is preserved and people can't just go in there and cut down trees or kill the animals. Exactly. And yes, if you go to this preserve, you're trying to catch sight of or get a look at Bhutan's national animal, the Takin. Now, resembling a cross between a goat and a cow, the Takin is central to Bhutanese religious history. There you go. Another fun fact. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't worry. Don't fret. The Chinese teacher is on her way. Hello,同学,大家好,我是Hanny. This magnificent temple complex is built on the edge of a cliff, approximately 900 meters above the valley's floor. This magnificent temple complex is complex. P-L-E-X 或者是 P-L-E 看到 P-L-I-C 或者是 P-L-I 看到 P-L-O-Y 或者是 P-L-Y 这一类的字根呢 就是用来表达 折叠, 对折, 或是交错的语义 那么在complex这个字当中呢 P 
P L E X 表示交错，那么 C O M 表示一起。同学们可以试着联想，把很多不同事物交错在一起，是不是就会显得很复杂呢？所以 complex 就可以用来表达这种错综复杂组合，或者是用 complex 来形容复杂的。好，顺便补充有这一类字根的单字，第一个叫 perplex。P E R P L E X， 它的字首 P E R 有完全的意思。那么字根 plex 表示交叠。那我们可以试着想，当你所有的思绪完全交叠在一起，完全缠绕在一起的时候，是不是就会感到很困惑呢？所以 perplex 的动词就表示使什么困惑，使什么费解。那我们在 perplex 后面加上名词字尾 i t y， 就会变成名词 perplexity， 表示困惑、迷惘。好，第二个补充的单词叫做 duplicate, d u p l i c a t e。它的字首 d u 就表示 two 二或者是双。那么字根 p l i c 表示折叠 ，a t e 是动词字尾。什么叫做二跟折叠呢？当我们把一张纸把它对折，你就看到哎，这两层一样大小的纸张嘛，大家应该很好联想说 duplicate 这个动词它有复制、复写或是拷贝的意思。那这个字也可以当名词或当形容词，这时候是念作 duplicate， 它当名词表示复制品、副本，那么当形容词就表示复制的或是完全一样的。好，第三个要补充的是 explicit， e x p l i c i t， 它的字首 e x 表示向外，字根 p l i c 表示折叠。那么 ，it 是形容词字尾。假设你有很多同颜色的 T 恤，如果你把正面图案都向外折，这样你一打开衣柜抽屉，是不是就一目了然，可以知道哪一件是什么图案，哪一件是你想要的？所以，我们就可以从向外折叠，可以看得一清二楚这种方式来联想 ，explicit。它表示清楚、明白的、明确表达的，或是毫不掩饰、露骨的。那么它的相反字是 implicit， 就是把 e x 改成 i m。implicit 则表示不明说的、含蓄的。好，那么第四个补充的是 d e p l o y， 它的字首 d e 表示否定、相反。那么字根 p l o y 表示折叠。这个字它的字源意思就是 unfold， 不要折叠就表示展开、展示。所以 deploy 这个动词呢，它具有展开、部署的意思，可以用来指这种物资的调派啊，或者是军队的部署。好，那么以上时间重点整理，我们回顾今天的单字吧。Peek, I took a peek at the next chapter of the novel to see what happens. Veiled, the details of the attack are still veiled in secrecy. Attraction, Angkor Wat is one of Cambodia's biggest attractions. Cliff, standing too close to the cliff makes me nervous. Gorgeous, our new house has a gorgeous view of the ocean. Costume, for the ballet performance, all the dancers had to wear matching costumes. Okay, everyone, with that, today's article is now complete. But As always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.